life, Al. You can come sit, you know. Hey. I think your shirt looks like it. You look very summery. Yeah, it's really good. Like, like, like like summer. Yeah, you should have a sweatshirt like jauntily tossed over your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Four minutes then. Neil just ran away though. I need to try and grab a safety pin or two from the end. You look fine. If, if, it if looks possible, okay. I would like to like just pin these back a little bit. I think it looks fine. Yeah, it really does. Uh, Neil, can I get your safety pin before you run off? And cash. Yeah. This is going to sound really weird, but at the end of the tournament, I'm going to need them back. Of course, of course. <laughs> Why did everyone? Because I'm fat. And if my trousers explode one day, I'm going to need a safety pin. <laughs> Well, your gut sense. I move your sense. trousers and get a belt. So this month has been very busy. The first tour stop I attended was in Dreamhack Austin and then in South Korea and then after Korea, Sweden. Hello everybody and welcome to Dreamhack Summer 2018. The Young Shipping, which I can't say, so I'm just gonna keep saying it wrongly. <laughs> Dreamhacks are just the best dream hacks. It's where it all started. The atmosphere here is unbelievable. So many fantastic players out in the audience ready to get playing. My current plan is to be the America's Points leader and make it to Worlds the third year in a row. I have a pretty okay lead currently. I was looking at other success that people have had, and I think Saiyan, PNC, people like that are close in, in points to me, but they're still behind by a considerable margin. So if I can keep up my ladder finishes and I can keep up my performance at these tour stops, hopefully make it again to World Championships. Hearthstone for me is very welcoming. Even just as a player when I was still in college, um, just competing in Open Cups and, and laddering, I had like one really good ladder finish, one month where I, I was just really on top of my game and it was really exciting for me and everybody was so excited for me. And knowing that I was just this you know, girl in my college dorm room playing some Paladin and everybody thinking that was so dang cool. Coming into commentating this was a bit outside my comfort zone, but everybody being so supportive was really fantastic. We have some former DreamHack champions here today playing over the course of this weekend, including DreamHack Summer's reigning champion, Orange, who did not have to get on an airplane to get here because he lives in Sweden already, and that is good news for him. He's still got the miracle part of Miracle Rogue in the gadget and auction all ready to go. Yeah, protected everything beautifully, like you say. There isn't really a problem here. <laughs> there isn't a problem here. <laughs> and taking the 1-0. So the last hero standing format is really special because it was the original competitive format. It's not the most standard one that we see now with that being Conquest, but the fact that when you win with a deck, you get to keep playing it means that you can actually bring some slightly more creative decks, I find, because you don't have to get a victory with every single one of your decks. So it is possible for a player to win three games in a row to win the best of five using the same exact deck. The player that loses game number one has the ability to counter cue against the deck that they just lost against. So there is that counter strategy element that maybe you don't really have in the Conquest format, but there is less of an ability to target a single deck and really make that a weakness of a lineup because you don't have to get three wins with all of your decks. You can simply sweep with one. Last year's standing becomes a lot more interesting, I think, when the matchups become closer because if yes. it just goes counter, 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 and everything goes as expected, it just comes down to who queued up the first game right, correctly, which oh. is, is fine because there's skill in that, in building your lineup correctly, lining up the first deck correctly. As a player, I want to 
sort of market myself as a deck builder, explore new types of cards that people haven't seen that I think have potential. And I've been doing that for a while, every single season, and try to hit Legend with a deck that no one's tried out before. And I, I think I've influenced a lot of tournament metas and tournament decks that people may not see, like the Token Druid influence that sort of came up in Austin. Game number one underway, Amnesiac on that Token Druid. And Zalea also on yep. that token, Druid, a mirror match we have seen over and over this weekend. If someone told you that was going to be the finals, would you have believed them? I think that can sort of be disadvantageous for me because it means that in the next tournament that I play, people are going to be playing the decks that, that I brought previously. So it's always, it's always harder for me because I have to then come up with decks and lineups that beat the decks that I made before. I think it's really important that the players are allowed to take notes. A lot of them utilize deck trackers and things like that, but obviously in a tournament setting, you don't have uh, access to those tools. So to be able to simply take notes about cards that your opponent played, cards that they kept in the mulligan, percentages of, of cards that you're looking for as outs, I'm sure a lot of the best players can do in their heads and maybe don't necessarily need to take notes to succeed, but having the ability to is really important and the players that often utilize note taking in their matches have great success with it. For me in the past, like it's been the event that I kind of, I, I dread going to DreamHack Summer. The only guy I know who thinks like Summer is like such a fun time is like RDU. Probably because he topped two of them. Unbelievable. Guys. Give it up, the DreamHack champion. Everyone else dreading it, definitely. Definitely going to be the hardest one out of the three. It went pretty poorly. I uh, went 0 3, probably my worst performance ever in a tournament. It's a learning experience. It was very tough, like, I could barely handle it. The field is so competitive. I think this year was like 185 participants. Most of them, like at least like 150, are going to be pros or names that you've heard of. Hunter Ace was really close in the last game. He did not win. He didn't. And he might not win this series. Like Hunter Ace's Scuffy, hand is better right now, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, Scuffy has the better board and he has the recurring three damage per turn wherever he wants to assign it. Yeah, which Death Knight card saves me and how? Hunter Ace has already used a Spellstone. He's already used a Brewer. Uh, obliterate is not going to be the way to do it. There we go. File getting the extra points of damage as well. Hunter Ace played with his resources a little bit too liberally and ultimately, I think, lost himself that game and, well, lost himself the series at the end of the day. Scruffy's going to go to a 5-2 and two record. Hunter Ace now at 4-3. and three. Now, that means he's pretty much removed from contention for top 16 yep. position in this tournament. Maybe he can still get top 32, get some points if he wins out from here. That's not, that's not the result that I was expecting. That was a long, long series. And Scruffy, I said he was tenacious. He wasn't just tenacious, tenacious and successful. Hunter Ace couldn't shake him off there, no matter how hard he tried. Lock out in the Swiss matchups, and so I always get to play the first round against the best player there is at the event. I had to play my first match against Muzzy. <laughs> that was really tough. He 3 0 me, of course, but <laughs> he was really nice about it, so that was pretty cool meeting him and stuff. It's really amazing that you can mingle with the pro players like that. Welcome back to the DreamHack Summer HCT Grand Prix, where it is time for the final round of the Swiss. It's round nine, and playing are going to be Skak versus Muzzy. But this time around, the Muzzy, if he can win this in this win and in, we are going to see him in the top 16 again. So far this year, it's... I feel like I'm not doing that great, but people that I've talked to are like, what are you talking about? You're, you're doing well. You won Brazil, you top aided playoffs, and you almost qualified to championships again. But for me, like compared to last year, you know, I was finishing top 10 almost every single month, but this year I've only finished top 25 once. The likelihood of there it is. Mitch King's Double happening. Mitch King. Yeah. As we mentioned a few moments earlier, 
But, you know, he set it up. He killed off his Hadronox with a fairly small pool of minions to give himself a great chance of getting these two Lich King cards. And they are going to be what sends this likely over the edge and likely sends Muzzy into the top 16. But with the death and decay yep. instead of the swipe, that does do it. And Muzzy eventually takes the win in what was a very tough series against Skak. Muzzy is definitely in the top 16. Congratulations to him for continuing his great season. Where I come from in Pennsylvania, nothing really happens in my hometown. The area is a lot more conservative. Not a lot of people at my high school really played competitive video games. They're into, you know, baseball, football, those things. Hot sauce right there, salt and pepper. Can I get you guys anything else? I think we're good. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. You have to make it yourself? Why do you have to make it yourself? It's really not hard. It's not hard. This is, hey, this is really common. No, I, I just never go out to eat, like, when I'm in Pennsylvania. There's always food at home. Have you never made your own fajitas, like, in a, in a restaurant? I don't, I don't eat Mexican food that often, though. No. Yeah. Neither do I. It's just like, this is, this is how I experienced it. I like it. I think I've had Mexican food, like, five times in my life. One of them was Flo. He taught me what a refried bean was. They're good. They're good. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. Why did it shoot out onto my clothing? From the plate. Your inexperience with Mexican food is showing, Moss. Stop it. My first exposure to Hearthstone was, I think, around junior year in high school. There's this one uh, YouTuber who I watched. He started playing Hearthstone. And I was like, oh, that looks fun. I'll check it out. And back then, I was noticing some of the plays that he made. You know, I, I don't agree with these plays. I think I can make better plays. And after that, Blizzard started introducing HCT, and that interested me. And since then, I started participating in more tournaments. So playing Hearthstone competitively has completely changed my life. If you were going to tell me that I was doing this playing a video game for lots of money and lots of fame and recognition, uh, I, I would never believe it at all. I don't know if I could have predicted a finer finish, but Muzzy has done it. So a few months ago, we decided to start a team together, or at least she, she decided to. <laughs> and she asked me uh, if she, she wants to join me. Yeah. <laughs> and she said yes. <laughs> so we found some, or she found some sponsors. She's basically our manager. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it costs a lot of money to go everywhere, so you got to pick the events that you like the most. And DreamHack was really fun last year, so I definitely wanted to go again. And because we are girls, it's like a little bit... Um, there are so many boys, so many men. <laughs> yeah. Because we have always have each other's support. <laughs> yeah, and other girls. Yes. That's cool. <laughs> I am every month legend, but I'm working also 40 hours a week, and it's not to combine with work and playing every day. So it's really hard to play stops like this. Have you ever worked a real job? Not really. I like no, I've not worked a single day in my life. Yeah. There was this one position I could have applied for. I, I think it was more internship. That could have led to a job, but I, I didn't want to do it. It would mean that I wouldn't be here. Yeah. You won't see my parents talking about me being involved in esports to their friends or colleagues, you know, who are in the middle of Pennsylvania. When I go back home, you know, I, I don't get invited to parties anymore. 
these Asian kids need to, you know, become doctors. Their parents, they don't want me at the parties anymore talking to the kids about esports because this guy's going to be a distraction. My mother definitely wanted me to continue school this semester, but she wants me to finish my degree, get a job. There is two more years to go. You have to wait two more years yeah. until you get your diploma. Because in order to get it, uh, you need to go to the I think where you sign up for you need to check out from there, and oh. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> and I'm not sure if, if I will be able to get it out there. I have uh, one year left for my degree, but I haven't finished. I'm traveling first, What is the degree about? Uh, game and simulation design. It's very good to discover... It was chemistry, but I think chemistry. Currently, I'm taking a break from my school, so I'm able to travel to all these Hearthstone events. I'm going to every single tour stop, and if I was trying to balance both school and traveling to all these tour stops, it would have an effect on my performance on both ends and result in me doing poorly either in school, which I don't want to do, or in my tournaments, which I feel is a bit more important to me. So with my Hearthstone career, I want to go further and hopefully get a higher position eventually in esports. I think my mother, even though she doesn't want to admit it to me, I think she is proud of me and happy to see me succeed. And then my dad's like, oh, you're making money? <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out who else is fighting for that championship title. We've got 16 fantastic players here. It is Pool 8 versus Faeli Twink taking on Janetsky. As I was a broadcast major in college, I DJed at my college radio station for four years. I was news director. So public speaking is something that I've been doing for about a decade now and gave me a lot of the confidence that I needed to pursue what I'm doing right now, commentating Hearthstone full time. But we can go ahead and check out the picks and bands. I believe they are ready for Yarla versus Defzi. Yarla, definitely the top dog, I would say, in this matchup. But we've had maybe some slight upsets already in the tournament. So defzi has got his work cut out for him, but nothing he can't accomplish here. But whenever somebody asks me how I got into it, honestly, I say, man, I got so lucky. <laughs> I was in the right place at the right time, and I'm just very grateful for it and taking advantage of it every step of the way. It's really exciting for me, personally, getting to travel to all of these incredible places to host and cast for DreamHack events, because growing up, didn't have the chance to travel all that much. Have you been to Sweden before? No. I never been to let Scandinavia at all. I just kind of figured that, like, you Brits can sort of hop anywhere that you want. Yeah. And take eight hours to get there. Yeah. Unless you want to hop to the U.S. And it, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we didn't really do much holiday traveling as a fam, so this is, like, mostly yeah. my first time in places. My mother and brother have never left the U.S. Really? That's really weird, because that's just, like, such a non-English thing, because Anyone who can afford to get out of England, even if it's just for a day, will do it as quick as they possibly can. Well, because you can just hop a train and be, you know, somewhere else. My family was pretty firmly middle class, but our idea of a summer vacation was, you know, driving three hours up north to the Wisconsin Dells to go for some water parks for a week or so in the middle of the summer. I mean, a bunch of American people don't have passports even, do they? No, they just don't. That's insane. You can live your entire life in your little city in the yeah. US and never go anywhere else. I mean, honestly, that's probably what's gonna happen to my parents. Yeah. They've both lived in, like within five miles of where I grew up for their, their entire lives. Life. Wow. Yeah. They met in like community college, uh -huh. doing theater together and, you know, settled down, started a family near my mom's parents. Yeah. And I guess near my dad's mom somewhat. I just never left. Yeah, it's great for you. It's not like it's a bad thing, it's just... No, it's nice. I, mean, I just like, never thought I'd be here. Yeah. I mean, I would also very happily live in Brighton forever. Yeah. But I mean, this is nicer. Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> this a lot... This is a bit like, cooler. Yeah, England does suck is the one thing you realise when you travel. I doubt it. As much as I love it. I mean, London is like a huge... I mean, as Americans, we sort of hold... England and like the British and London in this like high regard. <laughs> no, like I'm serious. Like yeah. for some reason, like every American girl wants a British dude. Yeah. Until they actually get to know you. Yeah. <laughs> and then realize that you all suck. Yeah. Good save.
I think before I'd started hosting and casting for Hearthstone, uh, I'd only been on an airplane once, and now I'm getting on an airplane and flying to Sweden, and it's no big deal. So it's a really incredible opportunity that I personally never thought that I would have, but I'm really excited to take advantage of it. That is far from it for today. A couple of upsets in the first round, but stick around because there are plenty more coming right up. Time for the first match of our top 16 after nine rounds of Swiss, Penadani versus Muzzy. I sort of switched around my band to give me slightly more of an advantage, but. Then I lost a favorable matchup, and then I lost from another favorable position, so. Penadani, he beat Muzzy in the top 16. Now that arguably was the most difficult opponent in the top 16, and he handled him no trouble. It hurt a bit because a lot of stuff needed to go wrong at the end for my loss to happen. When I attend these majors, you know, travel across the world and then end up not making the cut. It affects me. It felt a bit bummed out, but then I looked back and saw I still have most points NA, still got points here, so. It didn't feel good, but I'll move on. Congratulations to Penadani. He will be playing against Fury Hunter, and one of these two men will be our DreamHack Summer 2018 Hearthstone Grand Prix champion. Just because we don't know him that well doesn't mean he's been doing nothing to do with Hearthstone. He's been around, and now is his big chance to make sure that we all know who he is. It has all come down to this. It is Fury Hunter taking on Penadani. 200 players came into this arena two days ago, and now we have our final two who stand out amongst the rest. Clearing off the opponent's board on Tyler, you have a minion at five health. Three damage burst is what's needed to get through. Either way, this is a tremendously powerful taunt yeah. wall that Fury has set up. And also, more importantly, he set up very easily lethal on the following turn. It's looking to me like Penadani just doesn't have the ability to clear off these giant minions from the even warlock. I can't see any way that Penadani saves himself it is looking very much like Fury Hunter is about to become the DreamHack Summer Champion. There's the well played, and there we go. Hellfire gives him the lethal he needs. He has done it. What an awesome end to this tournament. Fury Hunter is so incredibly deserving. Um, he had a deck named after him. He used that deck, piloted it all the way to the finals to win this tour stop. First and foremost, dude, congratulations. Uh, awesome, awesome job. Gotta ask, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great, and I'm really glad I did it with Art Warrior, my favorite deck. <laughs> did you ever consider not bringing it to this tournament? Uh, I considered Quest Warrior because it's pretty popular right now, but um, <laughs> I was pretty much sold on the Art Warrior. So talk to us a little bit about what you have been up to. I'm gonna take a year off from school and stuff to play Hearthstone, to try and become a professional. So this is a good step <laughs> in, the, in the right direction. I can't expect to always finish number one in these tour stops. So I think it's taken a bit of a toll on me. It's so tough for you as an individual player to guarantee that you make the Worlds. Like, I think basically if you're like a very good player, like one of the best in the world, you probably have like 25% per year, which is not that great for you individually, but people that make it to Worlds are gonna be like 16 of the best. So like the tournament is going to be very good, even if uh, some of the best players are not in it, because there's just so many really good players. But if you try for multiple years, you should hit that 25% uh, at some point, right? I haven't really had time to go back home, chill out, play Hearthstone, like, ladder. My current plans to 
strictly focus on Hearthstone until the end of this competitive year. My goal is to make it to World Championships again and hopefully uh, win a World Championship. So that's the plan. So I, I don't know what's going to happen after me winning Worlds, but we'll, we'll see what, where I go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the HCT Summer Championship for 2018. De todos los tours top, digamos, de la segunda temporada ya terminaron todos. O sea, en el americano clasificaron. Así que eso igual fue como bajón. Estaba difícil igual. Is it really the year of killing all day? Well, I suppose today we're going to find out.